here's the welder I'm gonna be using, guys. Uh, it's one of these generic uh, spool guns off of eBay. Has a European style um, connector right here. Uh, I believe this is just a cap that has to come off. And then it's going into my old Dan Mig 200. And here's the connector right here. I made up these braces years ago. It's not the uh, nicest looking design in the world, but it's really worked over the years. Uh, that kind of bolts on like that and it just supports the end of the European connector because it kind of hangs out in the breeze here and what happens is you end up bumping into it or dropping something on it and you just crack everything and then you have to replace it so just made up this little it's like 3 8 threaded rod with two little clamps like this and it just kind of gives it some support all right so I pulled apart the handle the back screws off and then there's a little set screw here. You have to spin around the front collar till you find the little Phillips screw. Pull the Phillips out, then the handle pulls back. Once you get under here, you can see the two wires that you need to find. This will drive the drive rollers um, in your spool gun. So what I have here is an 18 volt Milwaukee battery. These drive rollers run on 24 volts, so with DC motors, it's fine to be underpowered. It's probably fine to be overpowered as well, but I'd rather not try that, and I don't recommend it. Um, so just for a test, I'm basically gonna take these two wires, just slide them in to where it says positive and negative. We're gonna use the positive for the red, but it doesn't matter. It'll just spin in reverse if you do it backwards. And we're gonna see if the motor powers. All right, we're looking good. Now what we have to do is I'm gonna solder some longer leads onto these two wires and I'm gonna drill a hole somewhere in the front of MIG welder, put a grommet or something like that and run it to the inside and connect it to the two connectors on the drive roller here so that I'll now be able to uh, regulate the speed and the on and off from the gun itself. I'll regulate the speed from the potentiometer knob that's on the front of the welder, and it should be good to go. So I pulled out my 100-year-old mason jars, and this one in particular, I store toggle switches inside of it. Let me see if I could get this open with one hand without breaking it. And I'm gonna dig down in there, Let's see. There we go. All right, so that's a double pull, double throw toggle switch. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill a hole, and from the inside, I'll screw this in. I'll drill a hole, screw it in, and then I'll solder some wires on the back. I'll show you guys how. I'm basically gonna be diverting the 24 volts to either these two wires, or to the back with spade connectors, I'll run them to the back of the drive mo uh, motor on the welder. So all I have to do is switch to my spool gun and throw the toggle switch either up and down and it'll divert, or, or the middle will be off, but, or it will divert spool gun one way, welder the other way. So these are the wires I found. I basically have a match to the green and I'm gonna use black for the positive leg. Doesn't really matter too much. If you guys hook it up wrong, it's just gonna spin the uh, drive rollers in reverse, so you just have to switch it. I'm not gonna hook up the double pole, double throw toggle switch yet. Uh, I'm just gonna crimp some spade connectors, some male spade connectors on here. I'm gonna run them through a hole in the front of the welder and just connect them to the 24 volts and just make sure that everything works. All right, if I zoom in, you can see, I just twisted the old wires with the new wires. Kept them in a nice straight line, very thin. Got my soldering iron warming up. I'll solder them, and then I'll just slide a little bit of shrink wrap over them.
All right, so the next step, finish drilling a hole. I put a little grommet in there for now, but eventually I'm gonna drill that out larger for the toggle switch. And what I did was I stuck this in. I stuck this in, I lined it up as best I could, and I checked where the little, um, okay, got that in. Now I look where the set screw was, right there, if you could see. And then there's a factory slot in this for the set screw. I made another slot two notches over, which should put it around the bottom roughly. And then I'm just gonna run the wires right in through the grommet. All right, so I made one mistake. I tried notching, putting an extra notch into the lock collar, but that was wrong. I actually had to put a notch into this piece the longer piece, uh, because with this notch and the wires coming through there, I couldn't actually spin the lock collar. So you can see down here, I have the wires just far enough back to clear the collar. So I brought the notch farther back into this. And then I just ran the wires through the hole I made earlier with the grommet, ran them inside. You could see they come right here. And then I just disconnected the original drive motor. Um, and just for now, I kind of just stuck them into the spade connectors. And when I pull the trigger now, the motor spins. If I turn the speed dial, I'll throw it all the way up to full right now so you guys could see. Very fast. And then I'll spin it back down to off. Very slow, very slow. You go to like four or something like that, just so you guys can see. And that's all there is to it. Uh, when I come back, I'm gonna test this out, but when I come back and I finish it up, I'm gonna mount the toggle right there. I'll use the same hole, I'll just drill it bigger, and then I could switch these on and off every time and basically just throw the toggle. But you know what, I'm gonna have to actually put a hole next to this one uh, because these wires are going to have to stay here. So I'll probably end up putting a spade connector here in the middle and then I'll solder them onto this uh, toggle switch on the inside. All right, so one more modification I'm going to do to the uh, spool gun is to this drive roller in the back here. <clears throat> um, I'm sure they sell these, but I don't have it. I have a spool like this. It's just uh, 4043 <clears throat> 030 wire. And I'm going to take this spool off. Has this tiny little hole on here. And this shaft, I took the nut off already. Just has a nut from the back. And then there's just a steel, thin steel shaft. I'm going to save this in case I get the right drive rolls for this setup. But what I did for now is I made up an aluminum bushing. I'm gonna mount that like that and just screw it from the back. And then I got a copper washer that's gonna go over there like that, just to give the, uh, the roll something to slide on. That'll go on like that. And then I'm gonna mount it on the front. I made up this stuff here. It's just a spring, a little bushing, whatever I had laying around and another nut from the front. And then what I did was I tapped this quarter 20 on both sides uh, just to make it easy. And I think I might just have to slightly drill this out from the back, which shouldn't be a problem. And then I could use the big drive roller. Uh, one other problem I think I see, oh no, it might be all right. I might just have to bend one of these ears on this, this is like a, um, a tensioner that just keeps the roll from uh, spinning too fast. Like if you take your finger off the trigger, you don't want the rest of the wire, you don't want this to keep freewheeling forward. So this kind of puts a drag on it. A lot of them work just on the spring itself. You set the tension, but I like this, this design, so I'm gonna keep it. Uh, I might just have to flatten this out to get it to fit on this bigger roll better. All right, so just drill this out. 
basically almost the right size already. Just reaming it out a little. All right, getting that in there. And then threading the adapter on. Do everything kind of hand tight for now. Um, now I want to make sure that I get this coming off the top because that's where this goes into the gun. Oh, made a mistake already. Got to pull this down first. Let's try to leave things loose. Bring that down out of the way. That's the tensioner. Now put the bushing down. <clears throat> pull the tensioner back. Uh, set the drive roll on. Leave it like that for now. It's actually pressing against the wire, but it might be okay. Uh, now we're gonna place our spring and our bushing down like that. Okay. You have to just push it down a little to get the quarter 20 thread to catch. Okay, lock that down pretty solid. And just make sure oh, it spins beautiful. And then that puts the drag on it. Nice. And then I'm just gonna take the wire off the top and feed it through. It's gonna be on a slight downward angle. Hopefully it'll be all right. If it's gonna give me a problem, then I'm gonna to have to do something with this bracket or maybe drill a hole further down or, or make a little adapter, like a extra piece of this arm angled down like this uh, to try to get the top of this roll going in. But it might be fine. It looks like there is like a steel bushing in there, steel liner of some sort. Um, I don't know if you guys could see right in there. So we might be all right. The wire might go down and might be fine. It only has to go down about a half an inch. Um, yeah, and it's still pretty ergonomic. It's not that much heavier. I think this should work out good.